I don't typically call myself a minimalist, but I do like to live by minimalist rules or beliefs. Hmm. Let me get this right. You see, I often think where we identify as a thing, we run up the potential of having to live within the confines and the rules of the identity of the thing. So if I call myself a minimalist, I have to live within certain structures and rules that were set out by people before me of what a minimalist should look like. This is a whole potential topic for another video, right? About identity and needing to be within certain rules of our predecessors. You see, sometimes it's hard to call myself a minimalist because I have that and many more examples, right? That's a VR headset. Not very minimal of me, is it? But I do live by a lot of minimalist principles and beliefs. I remember when I first started along this particular journey, I don't know, six years ago, something like that. Just moved into a new apartment in Los Angeles and uh, bare walls, bare everything, completely unfurnished. So first thing I obviously got like a bed, a kettle for a good cup of coffee, so on and so forth, right? Some, some of the essentials. Uh, but I remember one day specifically, I went out to, to get the things that you're supposed to put in an apartment. The walls were bare, so I was going to get some artwork, ornaments, you know, the stuff that we fill our houses with. Went out for several hours with a couple of friends, came back with one candle and an orchid. No word of a lie, those are the two things that I thought the orchid looked quite nice. It was quite pretty, added a bit of colour to what was essentially a black and white apartment. Uh, and a candle, because I quite like a candle. Or at least I did before I lost my sense of smell. That's another video again. So that's all I came back with. And I was like, oh God, all of that time spent. I, and I, you know, for this had been going on for years. And I always put it down to like maybe a lack of flair for this type of thing. Maybe it was partly my upbringing. And then my friend showed me a documentary called The Minimalists, I think it's called. And it blew me away. And I've been living by a lot of those principles ever since. If you saw my living room right now, you'd see what I mean. There's no sofa in there. I've been in this apartment for six months. No sofa. No sofa at all. So, yes, I've chosen to live my life in some of the minimalist principles. But whenever I talk to people about minimalism, there are a number of kind of misconceptions and misbeliefs about what minimal, minimum, 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 minimalism. I'm not drunk, you're drunk. Um, so a lot of misconceptions about what minimalism actually is. And so often it comes down to this thing about like having to remove stuff, right? Having to get stuff out of the house. This idea, I, th I think they call it paring down, right? And you see it in books and uh, like TV shows that are of kind of like, what is it, the Marie Kondo thing? The get rid of the things that don't bring you joy. So we often associate minimalism with the, this having no stuff idea, which is wrong. Actually, minimalism has nothing to do, in my mind, with having less stuff. The having of less stuff is actually just the result. It's what comes by living minimalist principles. You see, the core of minimalism is disconnecting your emotions from the stuff that you own. I remember when the first pandemic lockdown thing hit, and all of a sudden so many people were in panic because they didn't have access to shopping. Like eventually, a lot of people clicked and remembered Amazon exists. But for a while, it was like, oh my God, I don't have the convenience to go out and buy a new pair of jeans this weekend. You don't need the damn jeans. And 
ultimately that's what minimalism removes is that obsession with retail therapy it's the obsession that our self-worth is somehow connected to the things that we own this idea of keeping up with the joneses where we've got like um neighbors down the road they oh god they've got a new car how do they afford it on her salary brits will know what i'm talking about there you know, you go into someone's home and you see it filled with all of these fancy ornaments. You're like, oh my God, how do I keep up with that? And this competitiveness happens from household to household about the stuff. And I remember, oh God, we're talking a while ago now. I think it was in my, I, don't, I can't even remember where it was, but I remember there was a vase. There was this vase in the corner and whosoever house it was they were so protective over this vase that they wouldn't let the kids play in that room just think about that logically okay so yes kids are going to be boisterous and they may knock over the vase what's it more important to you the vase or joy because you are literally stopping kids and yourself, if you want to, if you want to actually experience the joy and connection with those children, you're stopping them experiencing joy for the sake of your vase. It's ridiculous. You see, when we fill our lives with material clutter, we prevent ourselves from experiencing life because we start to experience it through those items. So minimalism is not about having less stuff. It's about breaking the emotional connection to the stuff that you own. So then you don't need to buy it. You don't need to fill your life with it. You don't need to fill your house with it. Instead, you lean into experiences instead of things. So that's a quick, quick lesson on the principles of minimalism from Martin, your host. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. What, what was that? What was that? But I'm so so deep in this video, I don't even want to cut it. So I'm just going to leave this whole weird segment in and say, see you tomorrow. Bye.